Picture it. August 11th, 2020. You applied to be a Webkin's beta tester on the 6th. You lose track of time and think it's been over two weeks and they must not have picked you. Then your phone pings in the car. An email. It's from Gans. And the subject line is, Welcome to the Webkin's beta team. That sounds dramatic, but that's legit how it felt. Remember six months ago when I said have this done in a couple of weeks? My sitting down and chatting for 20 minutes idea got a little complicated. Anyways, if you weren't aware, I was picked to be one of the beta testers for Webkin's Next. So I wanted to talk about my experience, the family I grew, the changes that occurred throughout development, suggestions we made, and just funny things that happened because betas are buggy. I can't speak for my fellow testers, but... I think we had fun. Getting that email was so exciting. I mean, sure, it meant I had to do human interaction, and they were going to talk to everyone in a Facebook group. Yeah, okay, so let me just... Where are you from? Skip. Where did you go to school? Skip. Find family through. Skip. Upload a photo of you. Okay, now I'm ready. In the group, we met Carl, who is the creative director at Webkins, and Betty, the quality assurance director. In case you're wondering, I did ask just to double check, and Carl said it was okay to share information from the group. For the sake of privacy, something Facebook knows nothing about, anyone that's not a GAN staff member will have their personal information redacted. Anyways, to get the beta client, just had to follow the link to the Windows Store, and oh, that wasn't the Webkins I knew. Uh. Okay. Wait, who are you? Where is Miss Birdie? What are these graphics? Is this a Sims 1? That was my initial gut reaction. I don't think anyone took the new style well, but it wasn't like we eventually warmed up to, even if we weren't the most fond of it. The account creation process was exactly the same as it is now after launch. I, of course, picked the Husky, partly because I found it the least ugly of the three, but also because Huskies. I named her Karma after my signature Husky before selecting the world name Daisy Dreamfield from a wheel and being dropped into the new world of Webkins. Now, I didn't record day one initially, I more so went around and figured things out myself before summarizing some thoughts and then recording a little world tour. I ended up filming a few of these, which is where most of my footage comes from. I mostly did it to document the change in progress being made on the game. But I picked the modern room because I liked the colors the best and took a stroll through Kinsville. My first stop was, of course, the arcade to sample the games. And I really mean sample them, because we only got one play per game per day. Yeah, we'll come back to that in a hot minute. Glideheart was instantly my favorite while everyone else seemed to love Cake It Up, although we all agreed on one thing. The frog in lily pads was creepy. Also, we didn't know what to do because the controls weren't ever stated. I had to check out the pets in the adoption center and SPEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEEE
I was also lucky enough to get a scooter in Karma's gift box. However, I didn't really realize how good I had it. If you wonder why I haven't been running, there was no auto run. You had to double click in order to get your pet to run, but it really wasn't obvious, so I didn't get it for a bit. The vehicles moved at the run speed and made going through the map so much easier, although I didn't realize that for a day or two. So my scooter just kind of sat off to the side as a room decoration. I did a bit of room decorating and somehow afforded to expand my house, but if the footage looks a little choppy to you, well, I think my GPU was a little preoccupied. See, there was an early glitch where the frame rate on high settings was uncapped. Some people in the Facebook group complained about getting FPS over 260. Meanwhile... <laughs> Carl said, turning the graphics up to the max setting put the cap at 60. He also addressed the question lots of people were having about the daily plays, saying that they were here to not gate content for free players, unlike how it is in Classic. Which circles us back around to the one play a day thing. This was a huge problem for many as the only way to get more plays was to adopt a pet, which even then only gave you three. Some people spent their 100 starting diamonds on a new pet, as that was the cost during beta, but I spent mine on a scarf. Look, Karma needed it. She had to look cute. I also just want to point this out real quick. For some reason, they put the short animation Big Buck Bunny in as a placeholder video in the menu. I'm grateful I didn't watch it unlike lots of the other players. Okay, now we're on a day one and things are certainly going to move quicker. Late day two, there was an update and to summarize, they gave free accounts three plays a day while upping full accounts to 10. And most importantly, they started giving us 100 diamonds daily as our login reward. They did this so we could buy pets and test out the baby feature. And boy, did we test it. I picked out the unicorn to be my second pet because I thought, and still do think, it was one of the best models. I named her Sparkle Muffin and dressed her in a tiara. I then used her and Karma to create my first baby, which ended up being a common unicorn, but I still loved her. I named her Sparkle Pony. Still, it was interesting breeding my pets to create a baby. They said this was a heavily requested feature in Classic, something they got frequent emails about. Now, where have I heard that before? Eh, I'm sure I'll remember later. So the baby feature. Your baby will make a request, and if it has a green arrow next to it, that means it's a growth request. During most of the beta, after 10 growth requests, your baby would become a toddler, and after 20 growth requests, they would become adults. Sounds simple enough, but Sparkle Pony refused to give me any growth requests. I started asking other testers what I was doing wrong, because some people had already grown their babies into toddlers, and mine just sat there, doing nothing. I was then told to go to Kinza and wait for my baby to FaceTime me. <laughs> After sitting around for a few minutes, she finally FaceTimed me! She wanted tickles! She hated tickles. But whatever, it's what she wanted. I did the request and her happiness went down like, what you wanted this? The part that sucked about it taking days to figure out that I had to ignore my baby to get her to grow was by the time I did, they had updated the game and changed the growth cooldown. See, a baby could only give you one growth request every eight hours, but for the testing servers, they had it set to one minute and forgot to change it when they started giving us diamonds. People were literally growing their babies in an hour, and actually by the end of the beta, some people had gone up five generations. I barely made it to Gen 3, but that's also partly due to another glitch that happened later, so can't blame it entirely on loving my baby too much. In other news, during this time, I got the Golden Retriever and named him Mikhail. Totally not a Xenoblade reference. <laughs> It was also at this time that I learned some testers opened up a small Discord server and I was able to join it. Oh yeah, and this happened with the unicorn gift box. It was kind of... broken... for like a week. Although I did finally learn the magic of the scooter I was blessed with. Such speed. Since diamonds started piling up, that meant it was time for another baby. I didn't want to breed Mick with Sparkle Muffin and end up getting a dog with a horn, so I bought Seti a gray tabby cat. I put my gay boys up and, oh my god, look at him, he's so freaking cute! 
What? No joke. He has to be my favorite baby I bred throughout the entire beta, and he was only my second. If I could have one baby back, I would ask for him. I ended up naming this rare little guy Clamati. Although while on the topic of babies, I want to take a moment to go a little more in depth with the baby feature since it is rather complicated and no one outside the beta would have access to some of this information. Firstly, I want to squash the common misbelief that the pet you put up first will be the species the baby is. As you'll see throughout this video, that is simply not true. Carl has confirmed it is a 50-50 chance which parent the baby species takes after. Most of the time, but we didn't know what that many had ever did to bits. So it doesn't matter which one you put up first. Yes, in the screen where it shows you who gave what, the species parent is always on the left, and I consider that a little misleading and probably what prompted this idea. Secondly, color. Your baby, while more likely to match the parent, can be any color of the rainbow. According to Carl, one third comes from one parent, one third comes from the other, and the remaining third is random, basically making it a 33% chance that your baby will be a random color and won't match the parents. This is how you can combine two pink pets and end up with a green one. I can't remember when we were told this, but genes are in play here too. Even if the baby doesn't have a trait, it can still inherit it like a recessive gene and pass it on to its baby. That's how later on I bred this unicorn with black hooves and ended up with a baby that has pink hooves. Those came from grandma. Also, since each pet only comes with three sparks and we were breeding like crazy, the idea of buying sparks certainly came up more than once. Considering there was this image of a pet breeding drink that made the rounds, maybe it will come? It could also be edited, so we don't have any definitive proof, but I would like it to be real. Which brings me to another suggestion that actually caused a few arguments in the group. The idea of an orphanage. A place where if you didn't like your baby, you could basically put it up for adoption and another player could take it. This was brought up on multiple occasions and half of the testers loved the idea, while the other half went on about how it would be bad for children who actually went through the process of adoption or foster care. While I certainly understand that argument, as long as it's handled right, I don't see the issue. I feel it's important for this game since it isn't like Classic where when you buy a pet, you know what you're getting. At the end of the day, it's a game and the end goal is enjoyment. If someone doesn't want a green cat on their account, I think they should be able to get rid of it. God knows I've spoken to plenty of people who madly want green babies. We made a lot of suggestions, but for right now, let's go back to babies. Because let's be real, that was the main reason we logged on every day. It is no secret I love cats. But you know what else I love? Black and white cats! I really wanted to create a black and white cat, and I figured the best way to do that would be get a black and white critter and breed it with a cat. So I bought my next pet, another husky, and I named him Zeke Von Gembu, bringer of chaos. Or just Zeke. I put him in study up and bred my baby. It's a cat! It's... Oh no. If I can just... Why do the cats have flesh-colored faces? It looks so bad! It's even worse on babies, especially this case where he got flesh-colored feet! Alright, well, I have the perfect okay, name for him. Here we go. Oh! Um... I just... Saw a big button and clicked. That shouldn't have been there. I suppose that's all of Seti's sparks now. I mean, at least the baby's cute. I love that white tail. Although, either way, she, like many children, was a mistake. Since I never did click OK, Ono's name didn't take and his name was put in as Breeder, but when I logged back in, I was prompted to give him his actual name. Man, these are some disaster children today. So there's more to this game than babies, right? Right? Jokes aside, let's look at some things other than babies. Now, I've been referring to my pets as he and she, but the pets in this game don't actually have a gender. And you know what? Great! Carl's right! They don't need to know the gender of your pet. You can call them whatever you want. From a gameplay standpoint, it works really well. Imagine you bred a baby and couldn't choose the gender. Or you couldn't breed two pets because they were both boys or both girls. 
The mechanics just work better when gender is out of the picture. Not to mention your pet can be non-binary and there is nothing in the game saying otherwise. By the way, to any trans folks, if you decide to go by a different name, you can change it in game so your pets won't be dead naming you. I had to bring that up because it is legitimately awesome and something so many people are happy about. Moving on, Carl told us to buy the speaker in the W shop and listen. Okay, I just had to get that out of my system because I love it. It's also directional, so the closer you stand, the louder it will be. Makes sense that I stuck it next to Sparkle Pony's crib. No wonder the child never sleeps. Also, early on, Carl told us to turn on advanced editing. So I'm telling you, turn on advanced editing. Anyways, I had also learned how valuable a vehicle is. See, when you had to double click to run, that worked with cars as well, meaning you could zoom around at four times the walking speed. It took like five seconds to get from one end of the map to the other, it was great. Until they patched it out in the August 21st update. They added auto run, meaning double clicking no longer worked and the vehicles were locked at their base speed. It was fun while it lasted. Zooming around. There were a few events running throughout the beta. One of them, the fall leaves, was in the game when it launched, although it ended rather fast since fall was practically over. By the way, if you want to clear the notifications, you have to actually click on the leaf pile. The leaves don't automatically get added to your collection. You have to deposit them from your notifications. Yeah, I really don't like this and wish it was handled like it is in Classic. The second event we had was the back to school blitz. Like the holiday toy chase that went on around Christmas, this dropped apples you could collect in exchange for prizes. The annoying thing about these collection challenges is the prize you get is actually random. You are guaranteed to get one of the prizes in the tier you selected, but you don't get to pick the prize. Although in a recent update, they got rid of the tiers altogether and just made it a random prize from a pool of nine, making it even harder to get the one you actually wanted. There were also issues of apples falling out of bounds during beta, but it was something they made sure to fix before release, so there's that. Now, arcade games. Everyone had immediate complaints about tile towers. It was probably the second most talked about game from the bad angle making it hard to tell layers apart, the stupidly bright colors causing eye strain, to typos. It certainly was a frequent topic for discussion. Thankfully, Carl adjusted the angle and shadows making the game more bearable, but man, they oversaturated those colors. As for the most talked about game, that was Home Before Dark. One of my favorite games in Classic, but I refuse to touch it here. For some reason, you get a much smaller score in this version as opposed to the original, meaning you earn very little Kins cash. On top of that, the difficulty spikes way up and often makes it impossible to get past level 9, meaning you will never pass Sparky's score challenge no matter how often he gives it to you. For real, like 70% of his score requests were for Home Before Dark, and I don't know why. The game was also riddled with glitches. Some were merely visual, some were softlock animation loops, some made the levels nearly impossible to complete, and let's not forget the ones that made the game actually impossible. No one from the beta has good memories with this game. I don't like it anymore. All right, I don't have as much to say about the other games, so let's speed through them. Glideheart is good and I like the physics, although I have no idea what the wind does. The fuel pops in after you've passed it and your toddler will look like their parent. Cake It Up was everyone's favorite game, but it is literally just a mobile game stack, so I don't care about it. Lily Pads is a clone of Beat Hopper, except there's no beat and the hitboxes on the ladybugs are too big. They'd have a funny glitch though. Wacky Zangus had input lag, was really slow, Wacky sometimes went through the floor, and was an overall downgrade from the original. Smoothie Moves works good, except the graphics look awful blown up. Goody Gumdrops, the endless runner, is one of the better ways to earn Kins Cash, and the poison no longer works. Jumbleberry Blast let us use the debug level skip. Dogbeard's Gold is. well, still Dogbeard's Gold, except now your pet sometimes joins you. Last thing, the Wheel of Wow takes way too long to spin and will give you the prize below the marker and not the one the arrow is on. 
I'm sorry, that just bothers me. No one seemed to care about that but me. We also had the Wheel of Wow in Kinsville for us all the time, and near the beginning, there wasn't a menu that opened up. You would literally just click the spin button and walk off. The item or kin's cash gets added to your dock right away, so you don't need to sit there for 20 seconds and watch the animation play. And that should be everything about the arcade throughout the entire beta. Yeah, it didn't change much. I did make a suggestion for each game to have a manual like in Classic, but that never happened, which is a shame because some of these games really need one. Although I think we've had a long enough info dumping break, let's go back to babies because that's all there is to do. In the family expansion, I adopted a Yorkshire Terrier. No, her name is not Olivia, it's Oblivia. You know, like that cool region Xenoblade Chronicles X. If you've been paying attention, there's been a few Xenoblade X names already. Seti is named after a tyrant, which is basically a roaming boss, and Clemati is named after this tyrant. Man, I can't wait until we get some of my other favorite names from that game, like F in Sight 217 and the best song. They pick such great names for that soundtrack. Anyways, did I breed her right away? No, I put up Zeke and Mikhail. Together, they made this adorable little guy. Do I think he looks like a rare? No, but he is so cute. I went to name him Butters, but according to the game, that's a bad word. So I went with the next best thing. Say hello to Margarine. But of course, I got Oblivia, so yeah, I was gonna breed her. Just, uh, need a few days to save diamonds. Oh yeah, between that time, I was able to grow Sparkle Pony, oh no, Mistake, and Clematty into toddlers. I didn't really document what my babies grew because it wasn't that important, but I have to add, the stay baby button has to be one of the funniest out of context phrases. Also the little tippy taps they did when they grew. Adorable. But. Baby time. I figured Mick was the better choice for Oblivia, so as Miss Biscuit says, here we go! Here we go. Or don't? Huh. Okay. Try that again. Here we go. Okay, here okay we go. I guess it's not working and we won't get a baby. Uh. Oh? Rainbow dog? Why did that happen? Okay, that was weird. Wait, again? Oh my god, what is happening? Why are there two rainbow dogs? What just went down? Uh, who are you? You aren't one of the rainbow dogs. But I'm not complaining. Everyone else was getting blonde goldens and I really wanted one. So while this baby was a little more gray than the others, I was still so happy to have her. But the other two? Wow, they look exactly like their mother except this one spit up on his feet and the other got called Aang. Although, sadly, this little incident used all of Oblivia's sparks. But Mick got two babies he shouldn't have gotten, so... Congrats, Mick. Five, five children. I mean... Wow. Anyways, baby name, time to look up Xenoblade X Tyrants. Hmm, Elvira sounds like a sweet name for this little dog. Oh god, it's a level 90 sewer boss. Oh no, it's a giant monster for his <laughs> Perfect baby name. I ended up naming Spit Up Foot Scotty and his brother, Corvin. Should have been Aang? Probably, but I legit did not know who that was until I looked it up. So... It was also at this time I discovered possibly one of the funniest and most cursed things you could do. After taking care of Corvin, I went to dress Zeke and... Oh boy. Yeah, did y'all know this was a thing? You can get so many funny pictures out of doing this! Did you know the texture for the eyes is double-sided? I didn't! Screenshots from this are either utterly disturbing or downright hilarious and there is no in-between. I will absolutely cry if they patch this out of the game. I don't actually know how they would, but... Now, you guys know I treasured my scooter. It was worth more to me than my babies. It was my everything. Until it left me! Alright, so there was this bug that was really common where your pet wouldn't hop on a vehicle when you clicked on it, but when you left your house, it would be with you. So I thought nothing of it when Mistake wouldn't hop on until my scooter didn't come to Kinsville with me. I went back to the house and it was gone! I was so upset, I tacked it on the end of a Facebook post to maybe ask for it back, but also not be pushy and bother the staff. 
The next day, however, I decided to play as Mick, but when I went to get him out of bed, he wouldn't budge. I was confused for a second until my scooter came from the west of the map and rolled through my front door. So apparently, sometimes vehicles are stored off screen and my scooter was just sitting where I couldn't see it. It somehow got assigned to one of my pets, thus when I clicked, the scooter moved to that location. I had to de-equip it to get Mick out of bed, but I had it back. So, I wasn't the only one that had this glitch. I believe a few others experienced it too. Although, speaking of everyone else, I want to talk about some things other users experienced that I didn't. Buckle up. Cars were just glitchy, and sometimes there were infinite amounts of them. Don't ask me how that happened. The game accused this person of killing a baby. And after hearing about the deaths, can you blame this guy for trying to escape? But child murder aside, look at this beautiful rainbow frog! It was so amazing! But then, Miss Biscuit sent them home with the WRONG CHILD! Who is this imposter? Where's that frog? Why is there a unicorn now? Who thought these two were a fair trade for that rainbow frog? <laughs> this is why I can't live with other people. Screaming about a rainbow frog. <laughs> okay, really, it was just a glitch where the unicorn's texture got put on the frog model. But the result was beautiful. Although some babies had other issues going on. A few players were getting these sequin moon bears, which were super buggy. There were all sorts of issues with them. These babies just appeared at random, took no traits from the parent, and basically crashed the game for a few people. The folks that bred these pets also seemed to be the only ones getting some strange notifications. They were being taken to pet offer screens, and no one had any idea what was going on. These babies showing up became so frequent that Carl commented on it, saying that the sequin bear was not an official pet and merely a texture test. It was being used to test out another feature that they left in for us by mistake. I just kind of took that comment at face value, but hindsight is always 2020. Look, it's obvious. It was a redemption pet test. Someone even had an issue that after breeding one, they were able to pick which baby they wanted, which was close to something Carl talked about wanting to add after the Rainbow Unicorn and Retriever launched. They were in QA testing mode, somehow, so it could have just been a testing thing. I wouldn't think more of it than that. Although someone named their sequin bear, Barry Odd, which I think is very fitting. Did you know your pet has no mass? Because it can pass straight through the showroom window just to sit on the couch. They can also, oh dear god! The camera has some issues with going through dog muzzles, but Miss Biscuits took it to a whole new level. This person discovered there was no character cap on names, and Carl was just impressed a bug worked correctly. <laughs> Lastly, not a glitch, I just gotta say I love the pun they made with calculus. <laughs> I've gotta use that later. Oh, and blue cat baby! But you want to know one of the solutions they gave us for fixing glitches? Going into our app data folder, locating webkins, going to the app cache, and deleting everything. Apparently having old data in the cache will clash with the new data and cause problems. I don't fully understand why the system wasn't designed just to throw out those old files from the get-go, but this did work in fixing some issues. Two weeks later, they add a button for you to clear the cache within the app so you wouldn't have to go through the folder path anymore. As of right now, the button is there in the live game, so I can say I recommend clearing the cache every time there's an update, just in case it causes problems. So pretty soon, Carl asked everyone possible to sign on for a special event the next day. They wanted to push the game a bit and try having lots of people online and chatting at the same time. So a stress test! That'll be neat on release items! Oh my god! Sassy, the whole game is unreleased? Oh yeah, Carl also told us to try out type chat, so everyone did the logical thing and started swearing as much as possible. I had my fun with it too. Real talk though, type chat works differently now with it being a blacklist system instead of a whitelist like classic. On top of that, to prevent people from sneaking around the system, they're working with another company to monitor chat and flag problem users. And if you're wondering, this is why the censored messages say, I'm so silly. And you know, he's right. I never thought I'd get so annoyed at the phrase, I'm so silly. Now let's go to the stress test. My footage of this is actually pretty bad. I kept bringing Discord up to chat with everyone and covering the screen, so the editing here will be weird. I really should just put Discord on the second monitor, but I'm not that smart. 
So like everyone else at 1 p.m., I jumped into Kinsville and listened to all the motors. There isn't a single image that shows how much we loved our cars more than this. Anyways, you might be noticing some players popping in and out rather roughly here. As expected, they can't render all the players at once for performance reasons. Carl says it prioritizes friends, and with me being on a mission to friend everyone in the beta, that's why you might see more people here than you would normally in Kinsville. And then, we waited. Just kind of all sat there in our cars, applied an effect bottle here and there, tended to babies. Okay, this is more fun than it looks, although it took me a while to figure out that Floofy Von Floof was Carl. <laughs> he had lots of fabulous outfits. Although, no one was getting any of the special floaty clicky items, which is probably why they decided to restart the server, meaning we all had to log out and stay out for about 10 to 15 minutes. But when I got back on, people were getting the special floaties! Took a few minutes, but... Um... Why did a dog float across my screen? Click the dog! So yeah, the special floaty clickies were the dog, clicky, and clicky. as Carl said, it can give out any item in the database. Some people were getting entire pet gift boxes. <laughs> Kinda unlucky I got a for sale sign then. But thanks to that addition, I finally figured out that was Carl. Everyone swarm him. Swarming Carl! <laughs> He did let us know that mobile testing was on its way and it was going to begin soon. The game was designed to be the same experience on all platforms, so it was only a matter of time before mobile testing happened, just we didn't know we would be the ones doing it. A player also asked about Googles, and I must say, it's just ironic that he got caught by his own filter. What he said about focusing on four-legged pets though, while I'm sure two-legged pets will come eventually, there's lots of hurdles with getting them into the game, so it'll probably be a good while until we see them. After all, I don't think Sally will let them go without a snake, and I won't either. It was a crime to only make two plush snakes in Classic. Finally, as the event drew to a close and Carl had to leave, he let us in on one little surprise. Him and his team were working on a little present for us beta testers. And do you know what the prize was? It was a car. Of course it was a car. We loved our cars! There were a few more floaties before the event ended, got a second scooter, although the one I really cared about was this pillar! I don't know what theme it's from, but whatever it is, I want it. I want all of it! Meanwhile, someone just got sugar just sugar <laughs> now if you're thinking we didn't have a lot to do with each other other than talk yeah you'd be right this was a stress test for the game yes but there wasn't anything we could really play together although carl did assure us multiplayer games are planned for the future it's just a matter of when you know it's been too long since we talked about babies so let's go back to family matters shall we Elvira grew up, and so did the twins, but I must say, I absolutely adore her little outfit. The hat just fits her so well. But off to the adoption center. Since Sparkle Muffin was the only one left with any sparks, I had to buy another pet to breed. I picked out the cow since I really did like the model and just kept picking other pets over it. In honor of all the childhoods crushed by a mill tank, I named her Whitney. Both my girls up on the platform, it was time to create a new baby. It's... A pretty generic unicorn. Nonetheless, I do like the black hooves, and I decide to name her Peach Pie. Sparkle Muffin still had a spark left, and I didn't see a better pet to pair her with, so I bred yet another unicorn. All of Sparkle Muffin's children have been unicorns. But this one, I love her. The black and blonde go so well, and the tropical eyes really tie this whole design together. I picked out the generic name Blondie. You know... After the dessert, not her hair color. I still had gems to burn though, and Whitney had one spark left, so I figured I'd buy a cat and try again for a black and white. I grabbed the orange tabby, since I already had the gray one, and gave him the name that represented what he stood for. Sparks. Although, finally, I am going to make a black and white cat baby, and, and, and it's a cow. But green. It's a green cow. Ugh, fine, he can be Miltank. The next day, I decided to try my luck with getting a black and white cat again. I bought a panda and named him Bixby. I was gonna name him Bimbo because... Bamboo and testing the word filter, but I decided against it. Threw him and Sparks up and what do I get but a panda? The markings are nice at least and I named the little guy Star since he 
had stars on him. Tried again and it was yet another panda! Although not gonna lie, I kinda dig the color scheme of this one. He reminded me of coffee, so I named him Mocha. I wasn't about to give up on chasing that black and white cat though, so I saved up a few more gems over the next couple days and bought another gray tabby cat named Spaz. Him and Bixby together would finally make a cat and it's blue. I mean, I kind of wanted a Russian blue anyways, so... I named him Zero after that Mega Man X character since his regular counterpart is named Blues and... Yeah, that never made sense to me. Alright, I needed another black and white critter, so I got yet another husky and named her Pandy. After Zeke's blade, of course. Pandy and Spaz combined their sparks to make... a husky. But not just any husky, a GREEN HUSKY! I just want a basic black and white and I get green! Why? So I named him what he deserved to be called. Abomination. I decided to give one last shot before calling it quits because at this point I don't think it's even possible to get a black and white cat. But Panty and Spaz gave me a black and white baby and it was... a husky. Okay, he was actually cute though, so I named him Baby. Now, the reason I don't have footage of breeding all those guys is because that bit of breeding Miltank was actually some of the last footage I took for an entire month. The next time I recorded was 29 days later. This is partly due to there not really being any notable changes and partly because I wanted to save my gems to breed my toddlers before the beta ended, which no one knew the date of, but there was a big problem with toddlers. They wouldn't grow. See, they were supposed to give growth requests, you'd fulfill them and the meter would go up, 20 requests filled and they could grow. These requests simply weren't happening, or at least very infrequently. What made it worse is they lacked the green growth arrow, so you never knew if it was a growth request or not. I would leave the game run for hours on my second monitor, answer every request, and wait to see if the meter popped up, which it rarely ever did. Even so, people were having issues where the meter would reset, so even if you did get some growth on a toddler, it would just vanish. Everyone was waiting for the update to fix it. Anytime we had to download a new one, one of the first posts would be toddler request still broken. And I honestly was upset by this. I thought I'd never be able to breed my toddlers before the beta ended. It wasn't until September 22nd that they fixed this. For context, that glitch existed when that last clip was taken and it was from August 30th. All of us went for an entire month without being able to grow our toddlers with an impending deadline we didn't know the date of creeping up. It was maddening. Something else that was becoming an apparent problem to me and some of the air testers I spoke to was the name of the game. It was simply just Webkins and we all knew if it dropped with that name, there would be mass hysteria that Classic was getting replaced, which did kinda happen. Some people suggested some pretty good names too, like Webkins Sparks, Webkins 3D, or Webkins 2.0. But people in the beta started calling it Webkins Next because that was the name the iOS version was using in test flight. Yeah, remember the mobile beta Carl mentioned during the stress test? iOS, of course, was the one they decided to beta test first, and me being an Android user, had to await the eventual post let us know the Android beta was up and running. But that never came. They were having issues getting Android to function properly, so they just weren't going to have us beta test it before launch. I'll have more to say on that later. You know, out of all the things I've talked about so far, the house, despite being so important, has been completely left out, so let's talk about that. Something you probably already noticed is, unlike in Classic, you only have one size option for your room. Early on, Carl talked about getting smaller rooms to work, but I think they gave up on that idea later on due to technical limitations. Honestly, I think it could work with the grid system if the approach was you still had to buy a 10x10 room but it was divided in different ways. Or maybe you could just offset the grid sum like an Animal Crossing Happy Home Designer. Really, there's lots of ways this could be done and I would love that feature so I hope that it will eventually come. After all, if the house is meant to be like a big connected home instead of a bunch of random separate rooms, I think having the ability to make smaller spaces like hallways and pantries is important. 
But with it being so connected, what if you really like a new room theme, but don't think it would fit the rest of your house? Carl mentioned they were working on the ability to have multiple homes, which would open up a ton of possibilities, such as underwater houses, maybe a beach vacation home, or even a rustic log cabin in the woods. The possibilities with this are endless. With that in mind, I did make a few suggestions about the home, such as I really wanted to change the siding. That ugly yellow siding looks like something straight out of The Sims 1, and it's frankly awful. Although, while in the middle of recording this, on March 16th, they dropped an update that actually allows you to change the siding along with other customization options for your yard. It's really awesome and I'm glad it got added. Hopefully soon we'll see more kinds of siding. It would also be really cool if you could buy a room that wasn't attached to your main house. Maybe have a little guest house in the backyard or a tool shed, maybe even a disconnected garage. You have so much more creative freedom when you're not bound to simply building on one structure. It would also be nice to have multiple floors, but I'm not holding my breath for that. Just saying, if we could make a castle spire, that would be really cool. What would also be cool is being able to turn the camera and decorate from other angles. Look, this couldn't be in classic and frankly didn't need to be, but here, everything is 3D. It's all modeled and textured every side, so why can't I turn the camera and decorate my south and east walls? Every other 3D game I've played that allows you to decorate has done this, and it feels so foreign that Webkins tosses out that idea. All that being said though, decorating is fine. If you can afford it. There's no hiding it, Next is really expensive. Not only real world dollar expensive, but Kins Cash expensive too. Carl said they really worked to balance the economy in Next, and they wanted you to be excited at receiving 500 Kins Cash. The biggest problem with this is activities and games reward less, but the items don't cost less. The problem with the economy in Classic isn't that there's millionaires. It's that the items got more expensive and the Kins Cash rewards remained the same. People had to find ways to earn a lot of money just to afford some new items. And look, does it even matter that people are millionaires and webkins? It's not like an actual economy where printing more money devalues the dollar. Anytime I want to decorate in Next, I have to spend about 10,000 Kins Cash, which takes nearly two weeks to earn on a few items before having to stop and save up again. And that just ruins it for me. Either make more reliable ways to earn money, or lower the cost of items. You can't get people excited over 500 Kins Cash if it can't even buy them a kitchen sink. Okay, I do want to bring up the thing that's been staring everyone in the face throughout this whole video. The graphics. Really early in the beta, Carl asked for feedback on the pet models, and he got some good feedback. People were descriptive on what they did and didn't like. Someone even drew over one of the models to show how to fix it. A person brought up the pet patches replacing the W's, which is something I'm still not a fan of. As far as constructive criticism goes, there were some good answers. Carl even asked us the same question again about a month later and got more great feedback. I really assumed by that, in the fact that we were in beta, the 3D graphics would get polished up before launch. It happens in every game. The trailer from the previous year looks completely different to the final product. So coupled out with the fact that they asked for feedback twice, I really didn't think they could stick with those uncanny models. But then they did. There are PS2 games that do 3D better than this. A common criticism about the graphics is that they try and do too much with textures alone. There's also the problem with some textures looking rather low res, which I'm assuming is for performance reasons. Look, I'm a firm believer that textures can really help bring detail to models while keeping the polygon count down. But the fact is, lots of this stuff looks so flat and lifeless. There's also the issue where the game's style isn't consistent, and I believe this is at the heart of the uncanniness. Your first introduction into this world is from an anthropomorphic, femininely shaped dog that has a Karen haircut. Then it brings you to the pets. Some boxy, plump, regular old cartoony cats and dogs with an overbite. From there, you pick out the room you want, two that look moderately cartoony, and one that goes too far with realism. 
This is where I think the overly textured complaint comes from, because look at some of this! It's common for 3D games to use photos as textures, but in this case it clashes with the style. This is one reason why people are saying games from the early 2000s did 3D better, because all the detail in the textures is consistent with the art style. Even though it was early 3D and many things were rough, it all fit together. Even in modern games, look at Xenoblade Chronicles 2. Rather than modeling every strand of Pyra's hair, they just drew a few lines and highlights on the texture. It's not overly detailed to look realistic because that wouldn't fit with the art style. This game doesn't have an identity because there wasn't consistent art direction. This game wants to be cute and cartoony, but realistic at the same time, and that's not working. So there. I've said my piece on the uncanny graphics, I was able to warm up to them, but that doesn't mean they lack problems. Alright, now let's get back to Family Matters. It was around this time that they changed the growth meter, instead of it being 10 points for a baby and 20 for a toddler, they just made each meter take 15 points, but that doesn't matter right now. All my toddlers had full growth meters, were ready to become adults, and I had saved up quite a few gems, so finally, let's get to third gen babies! This is gonna be a huge breeding spree, so buckle up! I started with my two favorite kids, Clamati and Mistake. Together they made a purple husky, oh my god! Look at this adorable baby! I immediately knew I wanted to name her Lumiere, but just as soon as I thought of it, I forgot it, so I named her Luma instead. Close enough. Next, I still wasn't done trying for a black and white cat, so Star and Oh No were up. It was a cat, but it wasn't black and white. The flesh-colored face just got to me, so I named him Flesh. I thought I'd have better luck with Baby and Zero, but I ended up getting another fleshy cat, so I just named him Patch. One more time! Baby and Oh No are up, and I get a cat! But figures it looks like Oh No, but better! Samin Oh No Jr. Okay, so I gave up on the cat. Clamati and Elvira are some of my favorites, so I sparked them. They made a super rare, but... Really, it just looks like the regular golden with a rainbow flare, so I figured I'd name her default, but apparently that's a bad word, so I had to misspell it. <laughs> Alright, I lied, I hadn't given up on the cat, but Zero and Mistake made a husky that looks exactly like Mistake. I just gave up on naming this guy. With Zero and Baby's last spark, they gave me a green husky. Are you kidding me? I like the little lightning bolt pattern though, it makes you think of the bringer of chaos. So I named him Chaos. I don't know what I was thinking when I put Star and Margarine together, but it turned out well! This little girl is named Felicity. Okay, this is really my last attempt at a black and white. It had to be, it was the last of my cat sparks. But Star and Ono oh made a rather generic looking panda. Another zebra panda. I didn't hold back this time, I just named him Bimbo. The filter didn't catch it. I took a chance breeding a green pet, I put Miltank and Blondie up, and wow, that is a colorful baby! I named her Flair because she has a lot of flair. I thought about who I wanted to use Clematis last spark with, and I realized it just had to be a mistake, no matter what. And you know what? It wasn't a mistake! Look at this baby! I named the little guy Snowcap for obvious reasons. Margin had sparks, and I hadn't bred with one of the twins, so together, him and Corvin made a generic golden. He looks like his grandpa, so I named him Grandpa. Facing my fears, I bred a paw pet with a hooved pet, Elvira and Blondie. I must say, not disappointed with the results! I couldn't think of a name that fit her better, so I went with Candy. It's time for questionable choices, like Abomination and Scotty. Together, well, I just named him after my first reaction. Ew. Over the next week, I end up saving diamonds and breeding a few more babies that I, once again, didn't record. I don't know why I did this, but I figured I should use up Pandy's last spark, even though she was a first gen. Together, her and Elvira made an adorable retriever puppy. She looks like a pink margarine. I named her Scoop because she makes me think of ice cream. Also, I had a glitch where the game didn't want me to pick a crib and instead just kept giving them to me. Next, I threw Blondie and Marjorie up and they gave me a super rare that was actually adorable. 
The white hooves, the soft color, she was just so cute. I named her Opie, like the Opportunity Rover. Lastly, I bred Peach Pie with Mocha and ended up with a baby that looked exactly like Peach Pie. So I gave up and named her Mom. Man, all of my unicorns just have unicorn babies. You might be wondering with 100 free daily diamonds, how come it took me this long to save up? Well, our diamonds got lowered as the beta went on. We might have started out gain 100 a day, but they cut down to 50 about a month into the beta, and then two weeks later it was lowered to 25 before we stopped getting free diamonds altogether. We did still get some diamonds, I believe it was 25 every other day as a login reward, but I'm not sure. Early on, they told us they were aiming for a release before the end of 2020, and while many found it alarming, I looked at it and went, yeah, this is gonna get delayed. But then it didn't. In late September, they let us know our beta privileges would be ending as they were making the game launch ready. And there wasn't a single person that said that was a good idea. We were all looking at this game that was still full of bugs and lacking in features. I made a post about my misgivings and was met with a lot of people sharing the same thought. Many even brought up other issues that they found alarming. Carl ended up leaving a comment asking what features we wanted in the game. Once again, so many suggestions and high quality feedback from people who really wanted this game to succeed. And none of it was used. I feel now is the time to get into this here. Making games is hard. Making 3D games is even harder. While I felt our suggestions were getting ignored, that launch date was probably set over a year before they even thought of the beta team. They most likely didn't even have the time to implement any of our suggestions if they wanted to. All of us saying the release needed to be pushed back was probably in vain because they could have been saying the exact same thing to their bosses. Their job at the end of the day was to get a product in working order before the deadline, not take all of our suggestions and try them out, which would be an incredibly long process to begin with. The game did release very bare bones, but they're going to add to it, just like they did with OG Webkins. So who knows, our suggestions might still make it in, just didn't in time for release. So look, I don't think I should have to say this, but I'm going to. Don't harass the staff. They were an absolute pleasure to work with, and no one in the beta group has a single bad thing to say about them. If you don't like the game, you're fully welcome to express your opinion on that, but don't go after others for it. On October 18th, we were given the final word that the beta was coming to a close as the game was about to be announced. Since we only had a few days left, I made sure to get good footage of my kids, house, others' houses, Scoop grew up, I did a little decorating, and of course, bred one last baby. Sparkle Pony was my only second gen that still had all her sparks, so I thought it'd be fitting. She's my first baby, and she could be the parent of my last. I also picked Corvin, for some reason. That's something I legit can't figure out why. Together, they made a unicorn, of course. What else would they make? I like unicorn babies, so I can't complain. And this one had some nice coloring. I typed in final bang, hit OK, then immediately realized what I did. <laughs> I was thinking final baby and going out with a bang, and I didn't think of how it sounded put together until it was too late. But I mean, I also named a baby Bimbo, so not my dumbest name. <laughs> I had the final crib arrangement in the few babies that were going to be babies forever. I realized I never went over these icons for the crib, although most of them are self-explanatory. Some people seem to have theories on what causes a baby to spit up, either feed them too long or too many times. I'm just gonna tell ya, I have never found a pattern. Spit ups just seem completely random to me. The one thing I and many other testers didn't ever see was a dirty diaper. Every baby I had was severely constipated. It became news when one person got a baby to poop. I heard the change animation is hilarious, but I still don't know what it looks like. In the staff testing, they found it too frequent, so they dialed it back for us, but they dialed it so far back that virtually no one experienced it. The few that did typically found issues that were still present in the launch. You know, I kind of hope they never fix this. <laughs> in the end though, Clamati, Mistake, Margarine, Elvira, and Luma had to be my favorite babies. I think if I had more time with them, Opie, Snowcap, and Scoop would have really grown on me too. As much as I like my third gens, I must admit, 
The toddler stage is the cutest and I almost regret growing them. If I end up breeding in the launched game, I think I'll have toddlers forever. Really is a shame you don't get their gift boxes until they're full grown adults. Maybe it'd be better if you just got it once their baby growth meter was full so that way players who don't want to grow their babies aren't losing out on the items. Looking at you, Redemption Pets. But at last, on October 21st, the servers were shut down and there was nothing left to do but wait for the announcement. And it wasn't a long wait. Two days later, it stealthily dropped on the App Store. They want to release the mobile and PC version at the same time, but they weren't aware Microsoft's app approval office was closed on the weekends. Though I was surprised when I found the game on the Play Store. After all, Carl wasn't sure Android would be available at launch. I wanted to claim my old world name, so I downloaded it, although the words weren't on the wheel anymore. I didn't learn until later, but the words that show up are a random subset from a collection, meaning each time you go to the screen, some words will be swapped out with others. So I could have just closed the app and tried until it rolled Daisy Dreamfield again. But for those wondering, the world name wheel was put in place for security and preventing profanity reasons. I'm not particularly fond of it, but I get why it's there. This time, however, it flagged sassy as a bad word, which is kind of odd to me considering it didn't take issue during the beta. I just went ahead and misspelled it. It's not something I worried over since you can change your nickname at any time. Though, funny story. <laughs> Not too long after I made my announcement video, I was able to change my nickname to Sassy spelled properly, despite it still being in the filter. I don't know if that was a coincidence, or I found another bug. Either way, I got through the account making process and... You can tap all around and, uh... Yeah, this won't go away. I'm... I'm stuck. Okay, so I just need to reboot the app. No big deal. Wait, why isn't the sound working? Uh oh. You know you've screwed up when your own staff's response to someone complaining about glitches is Are you on Android? iOS ran perfectly from what I heard, no strange issues that the game didn't already have, yet our good old friend Problematic Android was so riddled with bugs, I don't think it should have been greenlit. Now, maybe if they had us test Android, these issues would have been given more attention because the state it released in and remained in for over a month was unacceptable. I don't actually know when it was fixed since that clip from Christmas was the last time I signed into mobile until March. So it could have taken up to four months, I don't know. Needless to say, I virtually abandoned the mobile version once Next was up on the Microsoft Store, but just because the beta was over didn't mean the problems were over. One morning, I went to sign in and got this message. My account had been locked by customer service. To say I was confused and concerned was an understatement. Thankfully, when I went to sign in about an hour later, I had no problems and everything was fine. Actually, better than fine, because I now had my beta car in my dock. If I had to make a guess, I'd say they probably had to lock my account temporarily to give it to me, so everything was good. Until the car vanished. It wasn't in my dock, I hadn't placed it, it was just gone. I tore that account apart looking for my car. After all, it was the only one I had. Zeke hadn't blessed me with a scooter like Karma did. I didn't even get to enjoy it, I only had it for a day. Thankfully, Carl responded to me, gave my information to the customer service team, and within a few days, I had my car back. I placed it in my room, shoved Zeke in it, and refused to let it out of my sight. God! But this still pushes the issue. The launch was a mess. It just appeared randomly on the App Store with only a vague tweet making others aware of its existence. No official word from Gans, no Webkin's news article, no sneak peeks or trailers, it just dropped into total silence. A game with the exact same name, uncanny 3D graphics, an entirely new system, and many bugs that prevented players from even finishing creating an account. The backlash over this was significant. 
Many beta testers, regardless of their opinion on the game, tried to calm people and provide information since Gans wasn't doing it themselves. It took them half a day to publish a short article into a crowd of confused and angry people. And that was too long. The staff and testers got the front of it. Many that offered some advice and tried to calm the community were lashed out at by people freaking out. It's not totally unthinkable either. Even Carl hopped on to say that this backlash was completely expected. My problem lies with the fact that they shouldn't have had a cold release. They should have done maybe a news article a day for a week, showing off bits and pieces and softening the overall blow before dropping the game like a hot potato. The community didn't know what we knew. They hadn't been talked to calmly regarding the technical hurdles of expanding the old webkins. They got left alone too long to panic that this 3D Toys to Life app was going to replace something they had sunk over a decade of their life into. What really didn't help the entire situation is that the game was rough and boring. Very clearly not anywhere near ready for the public. Now look, since release they have built upon the game like Carl said they would and added features that I genuinely like, like photo mode and strollers. They've even fixed quite a few bugs. But I still can't stand by and say them releasing it so bare bones in the buggy state it was in was a good idea. If it had been my call, and I sure tried, the game would have been delayed another six months. It just needed that extra polish and fun activities that didn't require you to spend money. I'm afraid these bad first impressions turned off a lot of players, and unlike Carl, I believe it's for good. The reputation also wasn't helped down the line by other huge falters, such as the new plush style and redemption pets, or surprise pets as they're now calling them, but I've already covered those in previous videos, you know my opinion, so I won't go into them here. Now, instead of looking back on next, let's talk about some things you can look forward to, like new arcade games. Thanks to our pets making requests, we know the name of an upcoming game, Fundemic Lilypads. Carl said it's going to be based on Lilypads 2, but with a theme change. Considering it's called Fundemic, I certainly hope it isn't borrowing from our current world. If you like trivia, then you'll be happy to know Quizzies is planned to make a return. As for the Curio Shop, well, Artie won't be running it anymore. Apparently they've got new jobs for both Artie and Miss Birdie, so we'll have to see where that leads. Has anyone here been playing long enough to remember Rain and OG Webkins? There appears to be an interest in adding it back into Next, although only if they can get it past performance hurdles and displaying in the proper places. I mean, it was slow and classic, but I was also running a Windows XP machine that had less than a gig of RAM, so I'm gonna take a shot and say technology has come a little further since then. I just like rain, okay? If you were a fan of Dicekins, well, I wouldn't hold your breath. They took it out of Classic not because it didn't work properly anymore, but because some found it confusing. There appears to be hopes of simplifying and reintroducing it, but that's all it is right now. Hopes. Since Next does run on Unity, I have seen some people hoping for a Maze and Hamsters port, and while I would love that myself, it suffers from the same problem Classic does where the code is very old. It has to be rewritten entirely to function within the current version of Unity, so I don't think we'll be seeing it again. As for any yet to be released pets, as of writing this, the only ones missing are the panda, cow, chimpanzee, pig, white rabbit, and gray tabby that's been added and removed frequently. They're being rolled out slowly, so it shouldn't be too long until they all get dropped. The sequin moon bear is among them, but they said that was a test pet, so I'm not sure it will ever see a release. There's also ones like the Holland Lot Bunny that Carl loves, which was recently added, and that black and white Dutch bunny on the home screen, but we never saw it in game. There have been pet sneak peeks in the Podkins episodes, so you can check those out if you want more information. For items, there really isn't much. We had the fall leaves, although that was in the game, albeit briefly when it launched. Early adopters were able to get those items along with the Halloween ones. So other items I have yet to see in game are from the Back to School Blitz, which I'm sure will become available next August and September. Aside from those, most of the items during the beta, plus more, were available at launch. I won't go through every item that's not in the game currently since even I'm not sure, so feel free to make a list based on what you see. 
Next is still growing and will continue to grow. So as strange as this sounds, this story is still developing. I hope over the years it turns into a really special game and maybe our input will have meant something. But for now, I think it's time to close this chapter. The beta's finished and it was an experience. I'll see you in the next one. Later. <laughs>